Hello, this is Arthur Nix with EWKS, and today I'm going to talk about a comprehensive version feature called the Audit Trail. Now, this feature, if you have the comprehensive version, is something that you really should be using. Uh, you know, it comes with the comprehensive version. It's probably the premier feature of the comprehensive version, and it's so easy to, to use and incorporate into your workflow, and it just has so many benefits that uh, you really need to consider it if you're not using it now. All right, so let's first of all, let's get into it and look at this feature. It's up here in Query, and here's the Audit Trail. In a minute, I'm going to show you how you turn it on because it doesn't default to turn on, and there's some settings that come with this. So right now, I right-click, and I will show all, and it's going to show all the, audit, all the revisions that I've made since the audit trail has turned on. Now, uh, you will then have the user over here on the right-hand side. Uh, if you have the multi-user version, this would show you who has made the changes. Uh, so that's just one feature right there. And you notice every change is made. Here's one. Uh, estimate was updated with new setup. Uh, and if I hover over it, it tells me, oh, look, I did the 8D8 and I updated the estimate. And it was done on 8-17-220 at 9.06 a.m. Uh, so you can see now on down, you can, uh, there's actually a milestone, okay? And so what you can do is you can create a milestone so that you can have kind of a, you know, a starting point before you start making more revisions. So I made a milestone here this morning, and you notice I could even put a description on it right there. Um, you know, note the times there. Uh, here's my user right here. And there is the start point of the cost right there. So let's just make a few revisions and then we'll go ahead and then uh, run a, uh, another milestone. Now to make a lot of revisions quickly, I'm going to use the estimate and spreadsheet and then down here, I already have checked off all bid items, and I already have only activities with the crew selected. So I see all the activities in the estimate, and anything in black, which is everything, uh, I can make revisions to, you know, except for the bid item. But everything else I can make revisions to, so I can come up here and uh, make revisions to the quantity. Uh, mainly what I'm going to do is just make a quick revisions to the Production rate, you notice there's my changes right there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just slow that one down. And so what I'm doing here is maybe I'm looking at a, a uh, somebody's, um, somebody has redlined a cost report with productions and then I'm going through them and making these changes. Or this is, you know, this would be maybe after review is done and I'm going back and changing the items that came up during the review. I can also, another good feature, if, I, if I'm not using the quote folders, is come up here to the stack of pipes and dollar signs and I can change material prices throughout the estimate right here. So I'll just make a quick changes there and now I'll come back to the audit review and that is under query audit if you don't already have it open. I refresh and there are my changes that I've made. You notice it, if I hover over it, it shows me why the changes were caught, you know, what what caused the changes, the cost changes, and then there's the, the uh, net difference right there for each one of these changes. Um, now, there's my start, addendum one. So what I'll do is I say, okay, I'm done with all the changes. I'm going to create another milestone, and I'm going to say uh, finish addendum number one, and completed. In this case, what I have is actually an addendum, but it could be also a, a you know a bid review. Uh, so completed number one revisions. 
All right, I put OK, and there is my ending right there. So I have my start, my end. Uh, I can also filter it right here. And look what I can do. I can say date range. I can filter on user. I can filter on a milestone. So let's say I want to go from there to there and put OK. And this is, this is from start to finish here. What can I do? I can right click, send to Excel. And there's the Excel spreadsheet. So this is, you know, you just think about this. You're making all these changes and they say, well, what changed? Well, there's what changed right there. Simple right click, send to Excel. And now I have all the changes in Excel, change by change, total by total, who made them, date change. And of course, if I want to get a Delta, then I could, I could, uh, you know, just do a simple um, Excel formula. Go ahead and do that. So that would be my start, and that would be my end right there. So that's one way to get out the changes here. Um, also, you can see the filters are running. I can also put in here, okay, how many, I would just want to look at changes over $10,000 uh, for the total or any one of these. So this is a, a good way to do forensics. If you have a whole lot of items and you're trying to find a certain item, uh, this way you can quickly get to that. Uh, maybe you would also do that with the user. So these filters are huge right here. I'm going to go ahead and reset them so that I see everything. And now let's go ahead and look at the reports that comes with this. Uh, so I go to reports, I go to uh, summary reports, and then I come down here to audit trail. So you notice here I can show all three levels of this. I can go from summary costs, summary prices. I could, uh, and then you can also the level of detail be milestones or just go to all the way to the full detail. And then again, I get this same uh, filter here that I had on the other screen. Let's go ahead and print this. And this is a fairly new report right here for the audit trail. Bring this up. Let me, and there it is. Let me go ahead and reduce this a little bit. There you go. And it, you know, start, start, let's go on down to where I was made. This is, of course, this estimate has been going on for quite some time. Uh, and then we come down to the, oh, this is at the bid price level. Let's go back up and let's show, uh, there we are, the, the spreads, different times the spreads was run. And then here is the actual changes right here. So you can see uh, there we go. There's my starting my revisions. There's each one. So it gives you actually a, a full description right here. And what change, look at the individual changes that it shows here. So it even shows you more than, you know, the Excel shows because it shows you the individual change to the resource, uh, because I was making production changes here. And then we come down and then we have the final right here, uh, addendum number one, and we have the milestone. Uh, and then we get into the bid summary. Now I haven't run a bid summary yet. Let's go look at that. So excellent report right here in the newer report format. Let's go back to audit trail. And well, let's go ahead and run a summary here. And the summary has been run, audit trail. Let's go to the bid summary changes. And then you can see right here, there is my bid summary changes. I can also create a milestone right here in my, um, right here in, in the summary. Or I am also can see the bid price changes. So when I'm running the pricing screen, I can see my price changes. Let's go to pricing right here. And let's just change a few things. There you go. 
and go back to audit review and then we go to refresh and you can see here it's tracking every one of my pricing changes so again you can create a milestone and you're about to make a lot of changes to the pricing and it and you could create a milestone start and a milestone in so excellent a way to track individual changes and also track your start and finish totals in heavy bid at all three of these levels cost bid and price let's go look at the settings uh, that affect the uh, setting up the audit audit trail so if i go to tools preferences estimate and then the first one i would say would be this one right here audit trail i can have it always on or i could turn on so many days prior to bid day. Now this is popular with people that usually like do monthly DOT type bids where you have it turn on like three days before the uh, bid date is due or anybody can use it as long as you set that bid date to be somewhere, you know, three to five days before, uh, you know, the estimate is due. Uh, if you don't want to have a lot of detail up, you know, up to that point uh, or you can just turn it off uh, what I do a lot of times, people have audit trail, I just go ahead and turn it on in the master estimate. So it's always on. It really doesn't uh, create too big of a file. It doesn't slow down the speed uh, in any noticeable way. And then you always have that detail. Now there's another setting in S system preferences where you can delete. If you have it on in the master estimate, you could delete that audit trail uh, when you create the estimate, the new estimate from the master. Now, the advantage of this is you can see if anybody has been in the master estimate and who has made changes into it. Otherwise, you really don't have any way. If you don't have that audit trail on, you have no real way of seeing what changes have been made and maybe accidentally in the master estimate. So this one is huge um, to have this. This is a fairly new feature where yes, you can have it running in the master, but then it's deleted when you create the estimate. So you don't need all that, that information, really there's no use to you in the new estimate. So the comprehensive version, uh, audit trail, highly recommended. I really don't know why you would not be using it. There, there's just no logical reason for a, a comprehensive user to not be utilizing this. Another way they could be using this is change orders. So, you know, maybe uh, you have, this would be your base bid, and then you, you know, you maybe you copy this over to start your change order, and then you modify productions or whatever, uh, you know, and then you would see your start, because when you copy an estimate from an estimate, the audit trail goes with it. So you see the start, and then you see the finish, and then you have the delta on that change order. And, you know, many times you're showing this to the client and it's a, just a much cleaner way of showing a backup to a change order if the, you have that audit trail going. So again, this is Authentix and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, again, uh, you know, the comprehensive version, check this out. You definitely need to be using the audit trail so I hope you enjoyed this video uh, talking about the audit trail. And, uh, you know, if you're not using it now, you can call tech support. They can show you all the, you know, how to turn it on and, and the settings for the audit trail and then start using it. Uh, you might be surprised on the, on the things that you can come up with, reasons for using it. And if you have, you know, obviously if you have the comprehensive version, then it's something that, you know, this is to me the premier feature of the comprehensive version. So no reason not to be using it. If you don't have the comprehensive version, you know, this is, this is a feature that would justify, if you think you need it, would justify moving up to the comprehensive version. You probably have the advanced. The advanced doesn't have the audit trail. And so if you see a use for this, and especially if you're bidding projects $20 million and over, uh, you know, at a, you know, that size, I think that justifies the additional cost of the comprehensive version 
just because it can catch mistakes that you might make. The audit trail makes it much easier to catch errors in an estimate. So this is Arthur Nix with EWKS, and I do heavy bid training, and you please check out my blog uh, for further information on what I do, and uh, also for a lot of other subjects that I cover in heavy bid.